the poor Carl's head <laughs> keeps getting blown around. Keeps moving. What you doing? A little misty. A little hazy out here. Gonna put me on a suit. Get to try out your brand new suit. Yep. All right, we have this small little local pot derby called the Bassmaster Classic going on this week. And we are allowed to start practicing in about a minute and 20 seconds. So it's time to dump the boat in the water, go spend three full days of practice, and then we got some off days, and then another practice day, and then another off day, and then we got the tournament. So we're still a pretty good ways out from actually having the tournament, but this is whenever our, you know, I guess you'd call it pre-practice is. So it's time to get on the water, time to try to find school of these fish, or try to find a couple of big ones kind of roaming around shallow. I don't really know how this is going to set up yet. The water's a little bit higher than I was initially anticipating, but I still do believe it's going to be, you know, somebody's going to find them schooled up early in the morning, going to catch them 14, 15, 16 pounds pretty early, and then maybe catch one or two largemouth or one of those big spots a day. So we're going to kind of try to find that holy grail, that school of 16 or 17 pounds. We're probably going to spend the next three days looking for that. So it's kind of what I want to do this week. We are back over here at Green Pond Landing. This will be practice day number two now. Yesterday we uh, we had some bites. It wasn't incredibly easy to get some bites, but we had a couple bites, had a couple nice bites too. But uh, you know, we really felt like it was pretty random yesterday. Didn't really get a good feel for the rhyme or the reason to why fish were where they were. But there was a lot of fish in this area for sure. So we're gonna put back in here. This is a very traditionally good area of the lake also. We're gonna um, kind of expand on it a little bit today, move around a little bit more, run a little bit more today, and really try to get a better feel for what's going on in the lake. But yesterday I'd say was a good day. It was a productive day. We found some stuff, found a couple of things where I feel like I can get a bite. And then uh, we're gonna try to just kind of dial in a little bit more, expand on it a little bit more today. And you know, we got 12 and a half hours out there to practice. So hopefully we'll find us something. Two days of practice down. Are you going to win the Bassmaster Classic, yes or no? Yes. Yes. If we got to pick one, I'm picking yes. That's what I want. How many did you catch today? I didn't catch very, very many at all, but I did catch one almost seven and lost a six or seven. Two real big bites. But I didn't have many keeper bites today. Less than ten for sure. Did you get them on camera? I don't know. We gonna see. We gonna see. So what you doing tomorrow? It's gonna be a rough day tomorrow. I think there's gonna be some rain, some wind, some cold. We gonna try to locate us a 14 pound bag of spots. And we gonna try to catch us 14 or 15 pounds of spots in the first hour every day. And then we'll catch us a big large mouth every day. Weigh in 16, three quarters, 17 pounds a day. If we catch two large mouth, we'll go ahead and get us 19 pounds. So that's the plan. Find, find us a 14 pound bag of spotted bass. It's the Bass Master Classic week. Pre-practice already finished. We did that for the past three days. Now we've got two days off. Then we have an official practice day. We have registration tomorrow. And then an official practice day. And then we've got Night of Champions. And then another off day, which will in turn also be media day. So we'll have to sit in our boats and then people come around and put cameras in our face, which I'm pretty used to because Hunter's doing it right now. But we will, uh. We got a pretty hectic week going on. Today is the most relaxed day of the week. Today like, is the day to kind of chill, do your tackle, get everything kind of that you still want to try because after this, it's going to be all about time management. I've said that in some other videos. Fishing, being a professional fisherman, a lot of it is time management. You know, you just run out of time. You've got so many things you want to do. We travel so many places. There's so much stuff, upkeep on the boat, upkeep on the truck, all kinds of stuff like that time management is a huge key so today's the day to kind of just sit back get everything dialed in kind of kind of plan for the rest of the week and go ahead and get your tackle kind of the way it needs to go keep get everything organized because from here on out time is going to be you know like a pretty valuable commodity so that's kind of what we're doing right now we're getting everything dialed in putting on some new baits putting on some uh different things from what i've seen to practice some other baits i think that they might bite just see if i can figure out a bait that's going to trigger these fish a little bit more because i'm not getting many bites and i feel like i'm around more fish than the bites i'm getting so we're going to try to kind of put on some off the wall stuff dial it in a little bit and just kind of see what we can figure out the last day of practice because we, we've learned some stuff over these past three days so we're trying to kind of fine tune that get everything dialed in but this is the last relaxing day the hectic week will start tomorrow 
This one works. We got 18 key on one work. Marker jacket they gave us. Yeah, I didn't have another jacket in the hotel room. <laughs> it's thick. It's heavy too. Head south on North Spring Street toward East North Street, then turn left onto East North Street. What is it? East Turn North left Street. onto East North Street. Turn south and go on East North head Street. Head southwest toward north. East North Street. Turn oh. southwest and turn on to East North Street. <laughs> Continue yeah. on East North Street. Head south on North Spring Street toward East North Street. Then turn left onto East <laughs> North Street. Oh. My. Turn left. Is he going to reach all up there? He will, woman. Pulled up a little too far. You see what we got for breakfast? Yeah. Sausage egg burrito. As you can see, it's not plural. It is a burrito. Are you hungry? No. Yeah. All right, let's go rig. Bassmaster Classic is one day away. We're doing media day today. This is kind of the last time to rig your rods, get everything done, and then kind of go inside, do a couple interviews, stuff like that. You know, see some new products, all that type of stuff. But today's kind of a get your mindset right type of day. Get your line, everything completely organized and how you want it, because after tomorrow morning it's gonna be complete mayhem of driving to the lake driving back fishing all day trying to get stuff back organized so trying to get as dialed in as we possibly can today real chicken and green beans don't look at this I can't see it don't look at that one salad grilled chicken green beans it's like cinnamon That's a quarter? Uh, three eight. Three eight. Quarter. Okay. Three sixteen one eight. Yeah. And uh, this one is uh, oh, yeah, yeah. three four. Oh, three I quarter, see. okay. Is that yeah. giving you your, is that like your pointer? For grass. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, grass is good. Got you. Okay. I Thank got you. It. Yeah, you're I'll welcome. <laughs> Do it, Kyle. <laughs> I didn't take it to Patrick say, can you sign right here underneath Kyle Wilson? <laughs> Kyle Welcher here on the Bassmaster Leech fishing the Classic this week and I've been using a lot of the forward facing sonar, a lot of side imaging, all that type of stuff. So C-Clear Primal Harness has really helped keep that live scope and keep all that forward facing stuff at a higher voltage all day long. That way you can see a little bit further even whenever it gets 2 o'clock in the evening, 3 o'clock in the evening, you can still see super far, you can still get a really crisp image and you know exactly what you're looking at all the time. So keeping that higher voltage to the front is a big advantage, especially in these types of tournaments where you know your sonar is like the absolute key. Kyle, so for Bassmaster.com, we're going to do a little rundown on your uh, top five gotcha baits. And yeah, I'll start with the, the Cover Nico, one of the newer uh, models that came out with. Tell us what worm you fish on that, what you like about that hook, and then where you would throw it. So, the worm I throw on this is a six inch BFF from 13 Fishing. This is a this is a technique that you want to use a lot of times around a lot of pressured fisheries and stuff like that. What it is is the, the Nico rig's been catching fish for years now, and this is just one that you can actually throw in brush piles underneath the docks with like 
cables, pilings, all that type of stuff. It, it's just a way to fish a Nico, which has been catching so many fish over the past couple of years, and be able to fish it in any any kind of cover where a, a Nico has been kind of an open water bait for the longest. And the benefit of this, um, they'll swivel on this new design. What's the benefit of that swivel? So the benefit of that is whenever you're you're reeling that worm in that's rigged like that, that worm wants to twist a ton whenever you're retrieving it. So that swivel just keeps your line from getting super twisted. For all round bend? For round bend worm hook, okay. So what's the benefit on that one and what worm? So the benefit for the four alt round bend is it's just kind of a tried and true technique. It, and the best thing about this this hook, in my opinion, is how how straight you can rig the bait you put on this on this hook. So you, you know that any bait you put on it's going to be rigged perfectly straight. And it's a hook that has a really good gap between the eye and the hook point. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get really good hookups. You're not going to lose many on it. And that hook's been catching them forever. And it'll always have a place. Okay, perfect. And how about the uh, the G Power flip and pop? So this is the hook you want to use in the heaviest cover. I throw the, this is actually the invader on this one. Mm -hmm. And it's the one that you flip around in just as heavy stuff as possible. This is the braid hook and the floral hook. You cannot bend this thing. That's, it is called the flip punch because it covers all the bases when you're flipping a punch. Sure. If you had to pick your personal favorite scenario to throw that into, yep. what are you going to do? I, my personal favorite is flipping it in like bushes, like some kind of a of really gnarly thick wood. I actually like that better than grass. So my favorite thing to flip this in would be some kind of a overhanging bushes that are touching the water or a butt brush is coming up out of the water. Two or three <clears throat> drop shot. Yep. This is just a hook that you have to have on the front deck now. All the lakes we go to, there's just fish caught on a drop shot. And this is the way that I like to use it. It just kind of makes it where the drop shot, you can throw it on anything. Throw it on docks, bridges, brush piles, everything and not get hung. And then a lot of times we have a pretty thin bodied worm on this hook, so you still get really, really good hookups on it. So you got weedless and you've got really, really good landing percentage. So that's just the one that I leave on the front deck for a drop shot. So good penetration on that hook set. Yep. And really good uh, keeper system there as well. Yep. Yep. All, all of it's good. It's got, a, it's got a good keeper. You just, I mean, it keeps your worm straight, keeps it weedless, and then you still, I mean, you rarely ever lose one of those. Perfect. Okay. okay, tournament grade drop shot next. So, this is actually designed by Aaron Martins to be a drop shot hook, mm -hmm. but in my off season this year, I actually started using this for a wacky rig, and I felt like I got a little bit better penetration as far as I skin hook less fish whenever I was catching them on a wacky rig. So, I didn't really felt, I, I never really lost a bunch of fish on a wacky rig, but I feel like with this hook in general, I actually hook them a little bit better and it feels like I've got them hooked a little bit deeper because this hook has a little bit better gap. So it's a really small hook, it looks super finessey, but I feel like I get super good hookups with this. So now this is the hook that I use for a wacky rig, even though it says it's a, you know, a drop shot hook. And a wacky rig has, I mean, over the past few years been a, a worm you leave on the front deck all year long. So that's a hook that I always have, have out also. What do you think over the years in recent memory have you had the most success with a wacky rig on like what scenario? So it, in, any time, the best time for me is if I, if I go to a lake and I see bass garden fry, mm -hmm. I just know that you can pretty much throw a wacky rig around anything and you're going to catch the, the few left that are spawning, you're going to catch the fry garters, you're going to catch the ones that's cruising, you just catch all the fish you can. It doesn't matter what type of cover. If I see bass garden fry, I know they're going to eat it. Okay. I'll write this way about this long. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. You should pick the same person and every time you do a signature, sign, <laughs> sign over their name. Yeah, sign over their name every time. That would be funny. All right, guys, we're finalizing, putting a couple final touches on media day, kind of rigging day. Bassmaster Classic starts in the morning. It's uh, the Super Bowl of bass fishing, the biggest tournament of the year. Everybody's looking forward to this one. Hopefully, we'll get off to a fast start, have a good tournament, have a fun tournament, but uh, Got everything dialed in, maybe we'll catch us a couple tomorrow.